For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm schizophrenic. I'm Gabe. I live with bipolar disorder. And today we are going to talk about jerks. Jerks. We get a lot of emails being mental health advocates, and we need to be fair. Most of them are kind and nice or informational or ask reasonable questions. Yes, most of them are amazing. I get such great emails, Instagram DMs. I get, I get such positive feedback. But sometimes you don't even sometimes. know. Sometimes. <laughs> you don't even know the emails that I get. So we've decided that we want you to know. It becomes very easy to think, oh, well, they're just living their lives and everything's good and there's no pushback. Because in general, we try to keep this away from people so we don't flood our social media with, oh, look what this jerk wrote us. We we try to be responsible, professional mental health advocates. Try, yes, try. Emphasis on try to be professional. We really do our best not to put the negative emails, comments, et cetera, out on the internet because... You know, there's that phrase, don't feed the trolls. Also, we see other advocates in other health spaces and even in the mental health space do it. And it just, it detracts from the message. It doesn't stop the troll. It doesn't make the person who had the insult feel better. And it just makes everybody glob onto this idea that we're constantly under attack, which, I mean, I suppose we are constantly under the attack, but Michelle and I have tried to promote the positive. Promote the positive and quiet the haters. Haters gonna hate, right? Haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate, and we're gonna ignore them in a way to make them die. But we've decided that we want to do a show so that people understand what vitriol we receive. We receive some vitriol. I receive some vitriol. I don't even know what that word means, but all I know, you can email me the nastiest emails. I still know I'm fabulous. You are fabulous. We are going to start with an email that Michelle received about her website, Schizophrenic NYC. And we have edited these down a little bit. You know, a lot of times we receive these long, like 2,000 word missives to get to the point. So we're, we're not going to spend all of our time reading this. But, but here, here is the edited version. This is truly a troubling sight. It plays right into the mythology of the unmedicated schizophrenic, which is so damaging. Lots of people hear voices. Lots of people have been given the schizophrenia diagnosis and aren't on psychiatric drugs and are great. I have no interest in talking Michelle out of her psych drugs, but the message that because she feels that she'll be on drugs for the rest of her life and that she can never travel or go on long vacations is the most depressing and terrible message to put out there. Why would you want to reinforce such terrible messages like this? Please reconsider what you're putting out there, Michelle. It's terribly harmful. Yes, I did receive that email and it went on and on with me and this woman. The thing is, this woman saw a video that I shot at Healthy Voices last year. And the thing is, there was a snippet in the video where I said, I'm kind of chained to the pharmacy because of my medication. So it's really hard for me to go on a long vacation because I, uh, sometimes I take a controlled substance for like ADD or a benzo for anxiety. And because they're controlled substances, you can't really go on a month to month to month, like over three month vacation. It's very difficult. And that's what I was referring to. But this person interpreted as I'm telling people with mental illnesses, they can't live their lives normally because of medication or anyone with a mental illness can't live a normal life. That, that's what she was inferring from that little snippet in that little video. And if you watch the entire video, it is so uplifting. It is so inspirational, but she took one tiny line and turned my whole video into a huge negative, negative thing. And we actually went back and forth for a while, even on Facebook, where she said I was insulting unmedicated schizophrenics because um, when I talk about the Rorschach test idea on my site, I say things like, when the unmedicated schizophrenic looks at a plain black Rorschach test, they see it from a different perspective. So I switch up the patterns and the colors and everyone's forced to look at it from a different perspective. So she said I was insulting unmedicated schizophrenics. So backstory, why I started saying that was when I was first popping up, I said, 
when a schizophrenic looks at a Rorschach test, they see it from a different perspective and then, you know, went on. And one time there was some women approaching my pop-up shop and one woman's kind of, I guess she was having a tough time. It looked like maybe she had been going through a divorce, but I had told her like, you know, when a schizophrenic person looks at it and I said that I'm schizophrenic, she looked at the Rorschach test and goes, oh, what I see when I look at this is this. And I'm like, oh yeah, I see the same thing. So the woman realized that she said, and then what I said was the same thing. She started freaking out and kind of started to cry. So I was like, okay, I maybe need to change up what I say. So I started saying unmedicated schizophrenics and then had to assure people that if I agreed with them, oh, I'm medicated, so don't worry. So I kept asking this woman many times, what should I say instead? And she never had an answer for me. It's what really- should I say? Should I say something differently? There, there's nothing that you can say. And I think that's the frustrating part about our job. Everything that we say is going to bother somebody. And that's just the reality of, of life in a public space. I understand what you're trying to do. I understand what you mean. And you're right. But if you paint something blue, a whole bunch of people are going to say, why don't you paint it green? So then you paint it green and a whole bunch of people are going to say, why don't you paint it blue? Exactly. It, th- this exactly. is just reality. Like, I mean, I, I spoke further with this woman. She's very anti-medication. She, she has a very big agenda. She has a whole, a whole thing in Boston. I mean, she, she's very established in what she does, but she's very anti-medication. So by watching a very inspirational video, she had to pick out the nitpick one little sentence, which was cut just for a little sentence and turn it into the biggest deal and tell me how wrong and terrible I am for what I'm doing. What I think is interesting is that I don't think many people can go on a three month vacation. Not, not many schizophrenics, not many people with bipolar disorder, not many, I just, I don't think many people can leave home for three months that aren't on medication. I, I mean, I've seen you leave your house for a week and a half. I mean, that's a pretty long vacation. So right. I, I think that you were just trying to explain some of the day to day dealings with living with schizophrenia. And because you know the internet is designed to make everything short, it, yeah, it was taken way out of I context. Was, I was just saying, like, I even said, like, that the full extension of that little clip was called Ball and Chain, where I explained that the pharmacy is like a ball and chain because I'm trapped there and I have to go there all the time to get my medication. And therefore, it's hard for me to go on a long vacation. That was what I was saying. Now, when you first got this email, and I think this is important for the listeners to understand, when you first got this email, you didn't write back, hey, I hate you, you're a jerk, you know, no. you know go, go screw yourself, jump off a cliff. You really tried to engage with her and make her understand where you were coming from. Not necessarily so that the two of you could agree, but because you wanted to be respectful. Maybe she did see it that way because she didn't understand the context and you provided context. Right. And when she started harassing me about the unmedicated schizophrenic thing, that's why I kept posing the question, what should I say instead? And she never gave me an answer. Well, it was never solved. You're going to insult me and insult me and insult me, but you're never going to, you know, give me any advice on what you think is the better idea. Listen. There are none so blind as they who will not see. Uh, Let's go Ah. on to one that you got. Excellent. Gabe, just heard your podcast about being in the psych ward. As a psychiatrist, I believe your co-host, myself, me, has some emotional issues, but probably has hurt most of her psychosis were drug-induced and not primarily due to schizophrenia. Many people have misconceptions about mental illness, and I'm afraid she, by portraying herself as having a permanent psychotic illness, isn't accurate. I would be happy to speak with you about this, so feel free to call me. I listen because I do like what you both say. Thanks. So, Gabe, you got an email about me. I I literally got an email about you. Like, like you were my child or I'm yeah. somehow responsible for you. And I want to state before we even delve into the content that it felt very, it felt kind of misogynistic. Like, because I'm the male on the show, I'm somehow responsible for you. And, and maybe it wasn't misogyny. Maybe it's because I'm older. Maybe it's because I sound more authoritative. I, I don't know, but it didn't sit right with me because it, all kidding aside, we are equals on this show. We do this show equally. Nothing happens without both of us signing off on it. And the fact that a listener felt that I was responsible for you, it's like you, you're you not understanding the premise of this show at all. And also, how does this psychiatrist think he can diagnose me off of an edited podcast? 
That's what I love the most. Michelle and I actually talked about this because we got the email when we just happened to be together. We happened to be in the, in the same place at the same time. And I showed it to her on my phone and she was like, well, but I had a lot of that stuff. It just got edited out of the show for a variety of reasons, or I didn't bring it up or yeah, he heard I mean, one podcast. He heard edited information about you and boom, he's ready to blow up your whole life and declare that all of the doctors that saw you in person were idiots because he heard a show. I, I know, I know. It's ridiculous. It just makes no sense and it's insulting. How about you go to my website, read all of my interviews, everything I've said, watch the videos that I've made and then make a judgment about me and then maybe email me. Why are you emailing Gabe? I listen. I'm responsible for you. I, you didn't know. I, I called up your dad. I gave him a goat and he's like, Hey, you own Michelle now. Oh, you with the dowry. Yeah. That's yeah. How much the dowry, well, you got a goat. I got a goat. I've wanted a goat for a long time and I found a way to get one. Great. It's all, it's all my dad's ever wanted. It was a goat. The goat. <laughs> I'm just saying like I, we do talk very openly on here, but there's many things that I don't say. So if you're a psychiatrist listening and you don't think I have a mental illness, just know. There's a lot of things I'm not saying. But if you want to know those things, how about you email me, not Gabe? We're just going to leave that right there. That's the, yeah. I think that's actually the perfect ending to that. We also get comments on you know, Facebook, Twitter, and you got a comment on your WebMD video that was made by WebMD. It was entered in the Tribeca Film Festival. It, it did not win, but it... All right, it, you don't have to say that, Gabe. <laughs> but it was entered, and it was on WebMD's site, correct? So yes. this is it. This is this isn't some video that you made with your cell phone. This had a lot of production value and was good enough to be entered in a festival. And this Not is a just common... entered top nine, top nine. Excellent! You were in the top nine. The point is, is this was a quality video, high production value, made by WebMD, starring you or featuring you. It was like a mini documentary, and it was it it was what it was. But here is the here's the comment. What a faker. This woman does not have schizophrenia. She has psychosis. Actual schizophrenia is rooted in delusions and word salad is very common. She would not be able to carry on a conversation like this. She went on to say in another comment, a, a few steps down, you have a borderline personality with psychosis. I took psychology. 99% of the people I have seen with schizophrenia, all forms, had speech irregularities. Many couldn't even blink and had a flat affect. Your diagnosis is wrong. I have never heard such stigma in my entire life. That is the most stigmatizing comment that could ever be. I mean, do you think I'm not, I'm a, I'm a faker? If I'm a faker, give me an Oscar, call me Meryl Streep, because I'm the best actor there ever was, if I'm faking. And this person says, I took a psychology class? A psycho you took one psychology class? And you think you know more than my experiences in life, plus the diagnosis that I've gotten through therapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists? I'm sorry, the psychiatrist that diagnosed me with schizophrenia went to Harvard and Stanford but you took one psychology class, so you think you know more? It's just absurd. I have a little bit of jealousy right now because I think my psychologist went to like OSU. So the, the, my, my psychiatrist, I don't know what medical school she went to, but- I'm just it, saying, I'm it just saying. It wasn't Harvard. When no. you're, you're diagnosing me based on one psychology class, but saying it's with psychosis, excuse well, me. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's, what let's, symptom? What symptom is psychosis come from? But but hang on. Let's 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 be a little more true. She diagnosed you. She used one psychology class to make her diagnosis after seeing one edited video. Exactly. I mean, didn't WebMD follow you around for like an entire day? Yes. And they made a ten-minute video. So they picked and chosen what they used and how they made it. I mean, it's it's. It's not like they followed you around for a decade and right. you, you told them before they walked in the door that you're in recovery. You're living well. You're living on your own. You have... A and honestly, for some of the stuff, they filmed me when I didn't even know I was being filmed. And also she says that she said something about delusional and whatever. I'm like, I'm delusional 50% of the day. I walk around the city and I talk to myself the entire time. I just have headphones on, so it looks like I'm either on the phone or I'm singing along to music. So how does this video know if I'm delusional or not? 
And she says, I have psychosis. You know, you know what illness has psychosis as, as a symptom? It's called schizophrenia. This is unfortunately a common occurrence where people email Michelle and they tell her that they don't believe that she has schizophrenia. I, I've worked with Michelle for a long while now. And I can honestly say that, you know, she, she does. I, I would love to tell you that what you hear in the podcast is how Michelle is 24 seven, but she's not. We miss recording. She, she misses emails. She forgets things. She starts singing randomly. She loses her train of thought. We have to reschedule. Working around her illness is, is quite a big deal and something that when we first started working together, I was not prepared for because I was like, oh, well, she's fine. And this, this was kind of a big deal in our early production days because I was like, what the hell is wrong with you, lady? And you were like, I'm schizophrenic. I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm, I maybe should have been more understanding of that. Well, well apparently I, I have BPD with psychosis, according to this person who took one psychology class. I mean, listen, you know, you can decide to go with the doctors that have been treating you for years or the YouTube's comment section. Ultimately, yeah. it is up to you. Want to learn more about mental health, mental illness, and psychology, but not be bored? The Psych Central Show is an award-winning podcast that speaks candidly with experts in these fields to break down complex topics into easily understood nuggets of useful information. Hosted by our very own Gabe Howard, along with Vincent M. Wales. Available on your favorite podcast player or at psychcentral.com slash show. All right, let's okay, move let's on to on. another one. Oh, this one's a great one that you got, Gabe. To Gabe, your position on the Murphy Bill is why my son is dead. People like you caused my son to commit suicide. You have blood on your hands because you didn't bother to care about anyone but yourself. My son's name is blank, and I hope you regret what you've done. First of all, Gabe, that makes you seem like an awful person, but what's the Murphy Bill? <laughs> the, the Murphy Bill was a bill introduced in 2016. It, it's Actually, it might have been introduced in 2015, but it's commonly referred to as the Helping Families in Mental Health Crisis Act. And it was a, a, a hodgepodge of legislation that, that did many things, many, many things, not just one thing, many things. It ultimately got wrapped up in the 21st Century Cures Act, which did pass, and it, it changed the way some things were worded, et cetera. Back then, the thing that I didn't like and that I was responding to is that I felt very strongly that removing HIPAA protections, those are privacy protections, for people with mental illness is, is a slippery slope and is very dangerous. Because I don't want everybody and their brother to have access to my medical records just because I'm mentally ill. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And the second thing that I had a problem with is, while I do understand that the, the very, very sick may need forced treatment, I want there to be very clear guidelines for how that force works and when that force would stop. And I didn't feel like it really had it sussed out. It was just like, hey, if you have a mental illness, you have no privacy and you can be ordered into treatment by the government. And I, I felt that it just wasn't firmed up yet. This woman felt very strongly that if this bill were to pass, she would have been able to get her son the care that I, I do genuinely and honestly believe that he, he needed. She felt that this bill and this bill alone is what would have gotten him the care that her son needed. And then of course, she's, she's a mom mourning the death of her child. I, I mean- So she I, just kind of took her anger out on you. She absolutely took her anger out on me. And I don't even know that we can call it anger. I, I mean- Sadness, Grief, guilt. devastation, yeah. frustration. And I don't know why I became the target because I, I really am an ally. I, I want to save everybody. And I'm sorry that it, whatever article that she read made it seem like I was saying, oh, people with mental illness can do whatever they want and we don't need help. And I'm not saying that at all. I just want to make sure that people with mental illness don't get scooped up into the system and then never get out. Because yeah. I'm looking to create Gabe and Michelle's. I'm not looking to create people that are institutionalized or in case management. So do you think that she thought that her son should have been committed but wasn't committed or something? I think so. I, you know, obviously we did not have a good conversation because I decided that that was one of the emails that I was not going to reply to. That probably, I, that's the good idea. So well, what were you going to say? Like, a sorry? Like, I, you know. 
Yeah, I really felt like there was nothing that I could say. I, I drafted a couple of responses, like, I'm really, really sorry about your loss, but believe me, I'm one of the good ones. Well, that just, it makes it sound like I care more about me than I do about her son. And I certainly didn't want that. Listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I can, I can say, absolutely, this is the only email that's made me cry. It made Aww. me cry. That would make me upset too, honestly. I would get really upset by that. I get upset by all the, the negative emails, but I mean, that's, that's a harsh one. That's a really harsh one. It really was. It, 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 was, it was not a fun day. There, there's, we'll just leave it at that. It was well, not a fun day. Uh, I did not reply. Now, ultimately, as the Murphy bill moved through, a lot of people had this criticism. And by a lot of people, I don't mean a lot of mental health advocates. I mean like civil rights lawyers, uh, disability rights organizations, uh, even hospitals were concerned that, you know, hey, if you force somebody into treatment, who's going to pay for that? Because a lot of the very, very, very sick, those that really do qualify for forced treatment often don't have a payer source. They don't have a way to pay for care. So if the government starts forcing people into treatment, somebody has to pay for that and the government has yet to pony up money for this or, or enough money for this. So it really did become a quagmire and it, it was my attempt to suss these things out that, that really, I think, bothered her because she saw me as an enemy to the ultimate passing. And that was not my goal. My goal was for something to pass that would work for the long term and save as many people as humanly possible. But listen, grief is a powerful thing. If I believed that somebody could come back to life if I ate a banana with the peel on, I'd try it. So in this woman's defense, if her sending me that email made her feel better, I, I think that it was probably worth it. But yeah, that's true. It did make me sad that she thought of me as the enemy. When I think of the enemy as all the people that don't know, all the people that don't care, or all the people that are in power that do know there's a problem and don't use their influence to do anything. I wonder if she emailed a few people. I, yeah. I have to imagine... You know, sometimes a lot of these emails come in in the middle of the night, and I have to wonder, especially since we work in the mental health space, are these people just up all night sick and we just become easy targets because our websites are always up? Yeah. When do you get the majority of your emails, your mean ones? Random, completely random times. It could be like after I like post something on LinkedIn or I post something on Facebook, Instagram, you never know. It, it, random times. I seem to get the, the mean ones overnight, and I got to figure that that's really indicative of people suffering. Let's change up and talk about a couple of emails that we have gotten about the show. Uh, we, we've, we've gotten a few, but these are our two favorite ones. Michelle, you read the first one, and right when you're done, I'll read the second one. This is great. What is the point of your show anyway? It feels like an excuse to get together with someone you think is cool to just bullshit and you think it's really interesting. Why don't you actually try to help somebody? And another one along the same lines is, I'd love to have a podcast where I can talk about my mental illness, but the fact of the matter is, is that I'm too sick to do it. You two apparently aren't, and that's nice for you. I'm glad that someone with bipolar and someone with schizophrenia are doing a show together, but I just wish it wasn't so stupid. You two sound like smart people sometimes, but mostly the show is a waste of time. You could be using it to talk seriously about the state of mental health in America or about medications or alternative therapies, but you're not. Oh, no. I know. Haters uh, gonna hate. <laughs> well, I would advise those two people, don't listen anymore. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Because if all we talk about is nonsense, unsubscribe. If you don't like listening to nonsense, don't watch reality TV either. That's true. But reality TV doesn't try to help anybody at all. I, I really do think that we do try to help people. We just do it in a very different way. I mean, I'm schizophrenic and I show people that you can live completely normal life with schizophrenia. I mean, no, that's no, what no, I try no, to show. The, the normal, normal, Michelle? You're well, really uh, with normal? normal enough, normal enough. <laughs> live, normal live enough. Well, live well with schizophrenia. That's what I'm trying to show people. But apparently, not according to these people, I just bullshit around too much, which is that was what people kind of do when they talk. They just talk to each other. You want this to sound like a textbook show? I mean, you want to go to a, why don't you just enroll in college and take a psychology class if that's what you want to hear, honestly. Or you could subscribe to the Psych Central show. And that's, first off, this is a show about a couple of people with mental illness just bullshitting. That's the point of the show. 
we're not trying to talk too deep because there's already just a ton of content that's too deep. I mean, all of psychcentral.com has all the medical information that you could possibly want. The Psych Central Show podcast, hosted by a dashing gentleman named Gabe Howard and another dashing gentleman named Vincent M. Wales, that's the format of that show. It's all you can learn about a specific subject in 20 minutes featuring experts. It's not even us. We wanted there to be a show by people with mental illness for everyone. And yeah, we do think that it's interesting. We're not making people think it's interesting. (laughs) Saying that you wish it wasn't so stupid really doesn't make any sense because we really are a bipolar guy, a schizophrenic girl, having fun talking about our lives. If you wanted us to hear like a bunch of smart, like intellectual, whatever, it just, I don't understand what you're listening to us for. Yeah, it is out there. And I strongly encourage people to listen to it. Listen, the the great thing about podcasts is this. There are four niche markets. The people who like us and the emails that we get that are positive, they're just like, listen, we love the idea of, of hearing the little things. You know, people that didn't know what a pain in the ass it is to fill medication. People that don't understand about sitting in a psychiatrist's office for an hour. People that didn't know what it was like to wait in the psych ward. Yeah, like you're hearing from two patients. But if you're calling us too stupid, do you want to hear from doctors? That show is out there. It's called The Psych Central Show. I highly recommend it. Exactly. Michelle, describe this show What in a perfect world, because we're still getting started, and this, this feedback isn't completely unwarranted or mean. You know, the, the show is still taking on a life of its own, and we're still tightening things up and picking subjects and having... We're still learning. So we're not, we're not necessarily mad at this. Well, yeah, of course we're not mad. Everyone has criticism. I would prefer more constructive criticism, but I mean, really what I'm doing is I'm sharing my story. I'm just sharing my story of life, living, loving life with schizophrenia, and I'm sharing it with you, my story of recovery, my stories of growing up with schizophrenia. I mean, what else do you want to hear? Right into the, right in a question, maybe. Yeah, if you have a question, write to show at psychcentral.com and Michelle promises to answer it no matter how invasive it is. That's true. I will answer all the invasive questions you want so that I do not sound stupid. I mean, in fairness, sometimes we do sound stupid. We do sound stupid sometimes, but I mean, is that our mental illness or just our personality? I, I think it's definitely our personalities. Yeah, that's really just our personalities. Yeah, okay. It's not our Let's... mental illness. <laughs> okay, Gabe. Like, didn't somebody once send you, like, toilet paper or something? You got toilet paper in the mail, something like that? Literally, somebody overnighted me a box, and when I opened the box, it had toilet paper in it with a note that said, you're full of shit. (laughs) I thought it was hilarious. I I laughed. How'd they get your address? You know, the, the internet has everything. I own a home, so it's not hard to find. Oh, okay. It, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all. Did it bother your wife? It did bother my wife. It, it freaked her out a little that somebody could find us. I explained to her that, listen, whomever was mad at me, th- this, is, this is probably all they have. And this is really the first time I've talked about it publicly. And I received that toilet paper like four years ago. So hopefully that person is, is long since moved on to send toilet paper to another random person. And the toilet paper was really high quality. That is something that my wife appreciated as a perk of being a blogger. You know what? Yeah. You shit on that guy. (laughs) (laughs) Michelle, it is always fun. Do you have any last words for our haters? You know, just because I get negative mail doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing because, I mean, I must be doing something right because you wouldn't send a negative email to someone that nobody knows about. That's true. Our fame is growing so much so that we now have backlash. That's right. Thank you for listening to A Bipolar Schizophrenic and a Podcast, and we will see you next week. Peace! You've been listening to A Bipolar, A Schizophrenic, and a Podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com work with Michelle, go to schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to psychcentral.com. 
The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.